All right, guys, we got this. Let's go. Good white trips. Eat. Close next go. On one. On one. Ready? Three. What's going on, everyone? Ancap24 here from Huddle.gg. Today's video, we're going to talk about man coverage and really talk about how powerful EA has made this to where I believe this might be the most powerful man coverage defense that we've ever seen in Madden because of the abilities they just threw in the game. I'm going to talk about what abilities you want to use, what lineup you want to use currently in MUT, and basically show you how powerful this is to where you can almost drop your controller and just let the computer do the work for you. I know that's very controversial in Madden. I'm not a huge fan of main coverage being that powerful, but it is June, it is MUT, and EA has gone to the extent of making it very, very tough. But the second part of this video, I want to make sure that I show you different route combinations, different concepts, different ways you can go ahead and attack this type of coverage in order to make sure you understand that if you want to go ahead and be ahead of your competition, we're going to give you that opportunity to do so, so you don't have to run the ball every down. So let's jump into it, okay? So the first thing you got to know is what you want to put on these guys and then which guys have it. And the first ability we're going to talk about is bottleneck, okay? This is a ability that pick them kind of was the first person on it in the community. He put out videos in the past on it. He's done short form content on it. He's actually had a play in his lineup called Shavarius Ward from the uh, Super Bowl. He's had him for the last you know five to six months. And I have seen and witnessed him basically put people, take one player out of the uh, play the entire um, last five months and basically just run routes for you as he just absolutely presses them, right? Well, now they've got the ability to have four bottlenecks on the field because uh, bottleneck used to be just something that was a uh, X factor. But now that you've got them built into players like Jarrell Rivas and Shavarius Ward, um, you can now go ahead and get four bottlenecks on the field, play man press and watch your guys absolutely just slow everybody down while you get a pass rush in. Now, not only do you have to deal with the bottlenecks, EA has put in universal coverage, which is basically where they're going to get knockouts every place on the field and also have, you know, better uh, reactions where it's like a one step ahead where they're uh, basically uh, taking away those those quick cuts. Well, Darrell Rivas has that. And then you can go ahead and see if I go through this over on this side right here, see what I've got on these players. What you're going to see here is that if I use um, Darrell Rivas, which is going to have your universal coverage and your bottleneck, Javarius Ward, which I'm going to have one step ahead, and then I'm going to put the deep route and medium route KO on him. And I also have bottleneck, but they only list the first five, so you can see how powerful he is. Those guys, those guys are going to be my inside cornerbacks, okay? Now, my outside cornerbacks in this dollar cover two man is going to be HHRL, where you're going to see that he's going to have, um, you don't see it here because, again, they are um, not showing everything he has. I'll just go ahead and click on him so you can see it. But what you're going to see here when you look at this player, he is going to have the ability to have outside shade. I do that because he's an outside player, which basically means that he's going to be able to go and um, stop anyone outside the numbers, right? And I got deep KO, medium KO, stonewall, persistent, you know, pick artist, and then your bottleneck. So in practice, when I show you this, he's going to have all the abilities that you're going to need to shut down a player on the outside. And then I'm going to go with Talib as the other player. You could do this with a lot of the other theme team all-stars. You could do this with like um, players that, you know, those Christian Gonzalez's and all that type of stuff. But for the sake of the video, I had Talib. So I'm just going to show it to you with Talib. He's going to have bottleneck as well. He's going to have outside shade and then the deep and medium wrap KOs. So basically you're going to see that these guys need to get open in order not to get the KO. And they also are going to get pressed. They're also going to be able to go ahead and not only get pressed, they're going to be able to uh, react to the cuts that basically you're taking away your route techs, right? So then on the safety spot, we've got Ronnie Lott, who's got reinforcement, and so does Neil. And then they also have all the abilities to basically break on the ball. So that way you basically are seeing that you just got a powerhouse of a team, right? We could throw in Larry Wilson or Bam Bam uh, Kanzler at the um, the two linebacker positions. And you're going to see everybody's going to be unlocked there. So let's jump into this and show you basically how good this is. And then how do we go ahead and um, you know counter it on offense? So now that we got to the field, we're going to talk about cover two man out of any four 
db type of set. Uh, so dollar is gonna be the easiest one, it's the one that most people use. And the reason for that is that when you have a nickel set where there's only three dbs, one of the players that is going to be covered by the linebacker isn't going to be pressed. But if you go ahead and use a dollar, all four players are going to press their players in that alignment, okay? So what we're going to do here is we'll call the cover two man, and then I'm just going to call a simple thing that's a flood concept like curl flat corner. And on offense, all I'm going to do is put the B on a streak. What I want to do is show you that how powerful this is with bottleneck and whatnot. So if you look at it right now, you can see that my number 18 is not pressed. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna press your players to where everybody's in their face so that way bottleneck is gonna go ahead and activate. As you can see with my route combination, it's just something simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and you know kind of run a corner flat streak concept with a drag underneath. And what you're gonna see here is that I like the ball, I'm gonna do nothing. All I'm gonna do is make sure that I am the user that's, that's blitzing. I'm going to wait for any in-breaking routes because if they break to the outside, you're really not going to be able to cover it and you've got all those KOs to go ahead and do it. We can shade if we need to, but what we're going to do is wait for the in-breaking routes and take away first threats, right? So if I go ahead and hike this ball, what I'm going to show you here is just how these guys absolutely are just basically in the dirt, okay? Let's go to instant replay. I want to make sure you understand why this works, what it is. These guys are going to be basically running routes where First off, you got the flat. Not a big deal. This guy's really not going to get, um, you know, pressed because he has an outside release. But you can see once we get in front of him, we go ahead and do it. Now, watch number 21 here. This is Tlaib. He's going to basically just go ahead and absolutely just go after this guy and take him out of the play. Same with number 24. You see how this guy's just not going to be able to get out of the play? He's absolutely pressing him. Look at these presses. For four or five yards, there is absolutely nothing they can do. And the same thing over here on the drag. You can see how we're going ahead and just running him off the route. When bottleneck is going against routes that really have a vertical stem to start off, they're very, very powerful. And that's why it's really, really good. I mean, I could put the B on a flat, you know, I could put this guy, you know, basically, you know, on a streak, just, you know, I'm just looking at different things that I could show you when it comes to, you know, what this is gonna be really, really good against. And that's going to basically get them to really not have too much of an ability to get off of it. See how this is here? And now you're gonna see how you are just getting everybody absolutely, you know, basically blanketed, right? Now, if I go through here and I can just go ahead and do different things when it comes to um, route combinations so you can see it, I'll do something like verticals, right? And I'll do something like this to where um, we'll do a, uh, a route combination where something like this, something underneath, right? It does not matter. What you're gonna see is once we go ahead and we you know, go ahead and press these guys, it's going to be the same thing. These guys are going to get kind of get buried. They're going to get buried, buried, buried. And look at this. They're all absolutely covered. You don't have to do anything with these players. And that's what's really, really good about bottleneck. And what you're going to see is that even when you try to get people open, right? Like man beaters this year, one of the better ones is a curl route, right? If I go ahead and put this um, RB on a curl, these guys are underneath types of uh, shade, right? So if I go ahead and do this, this guy's gonna get, you know, this, I go ahead and try to do this. Now you're gonna see how this guy is basically going to get just absolutely blanketed, right? We didn't get the, the knockout there because it was the double knockout, but look how blanketed this is. They're never gonna be able to go ahead and live off of this. They're just, the bottleneck gets them in a spot and we go ahead and try to throw it the perfect thing. This guy's like right there, we get that swat. And for some reason, you know, we got that second hit right here and didn't go ahead and knock it out. But what you can see is that it's blanketed, right? So let's talk about how we can go ahead and attack this, okay? So the first concept we're gonna look at, guys, is slot wheels. And I'm gonna show you my favorite slot wheel. I've taught this before. It's out of Pistol Trips Open. Everything that you're gonna see today is gonna be out of the Run and Shoot Playbook. It's what I'm currently in. I did drop a game plan a few weeks ago, and I'm dropping another one next week um, as the second one. Um, so if you do like the plays here, you wanna build around this offense, you can go through and look at that. So the curl flat wheel, okay? You want this to where the trips are to the wide side, but I really wanna talk about this wheel, it's the RB. What I like about it so much is that it's got a really nice angle that is gonna to get to the to the outside, but then it cuts up, you know, basically um, in a way that absolutely torches this. Now, the bottleneck that is so powerful will not get hands on this. That's, that's why we like this so much. And if we just put the A on a streak, the B on a smoke screen, what you're gonna see is that the RB is gonna get around that player and you're gonna be able to hit this guy pretty easily and get yourself some easy yards. You wanna do this to the wide side of the field so you have enough room. I am gonna go pretty quickly through this because we wanna get as many as we can in for you. The second slot wheel you can do comes out of the gun trips uh, halfback week and it's gonna be this PA wide receiver in. 
Now this is going to be found in a lot of playbooks, but I want to tell you that this is going to be inconsistent depending on what your alignment is. I got several plays in this uh, playbook and they don't always all look the same. If I do the same thing like this, what you can see here is that this guy is going to be able to get up the field, hit the same catch, get down and get yourself the easy catch. There are times where I go ahead and I make sure that on um, some formations, I got to motion this guy to the right to get him closer. And you know, if you do it that way, what you can end up doing is you can also put him on a flat route or a slant route, something to get him to kind of get the other guy to crash. And you can see here that that'll work just the same. So if you're having some issues with your alignment, you can do that second way as well. Now, the thing about this is that if they go ahead and they shade to the outside, it does take it away sometimes. It's not as consistent. I'll show you that here where um, I'm gonna show you that it does work, but it doesn't always work on this if they go ahead and they press and then they shade to the outside. So if they shade to the outside, what ends up happening is that those guys could not hit your player when he gets around the corner. Let's look at this real quick. You see here that he got through still, he still got the catch, but there are times that when they shade outside, they take a little bit of a different angle to that player and that ends up not being as consistent. So we need to have plays that go ahead and attack that. So let me just move this to the right side. And I'm gonna start talking about when they start shading outside, what do you do to combat that, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and call routes that have the ability to get inside quickly on their first step. And the first route I'm gonna show you here is gonna be, we'll be in gun spread for a little bit so you can see it. It's this PA read play. If I go ahead and press, I want you to look at this route by the Y. Now the key here in the concept I want you to get out of this is you want to get to the inside, but not only do you want to get to the inside, you don't want your elevation to be too high. So if you look at this A, if I put him on a regular crosser, if he gets off of his player, he's going to keep on going up, 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 up the field. Well, the cover two man is an underneath coverage and it does a really good job of undercutting routes. So if it, if you were able to beat him, they're going to take a, a, a path to your route that's going to get underneath and you don't want it to keep on going up the field because they can catch up. So if I just run this route, I'm not going to do any type of outside leverage yet. You're going to see this Y route will get inside and then it cuts across the field to where we could throw this ball level. What I mean by level is basically towards the sidelines where we're basically doing it. And what you're going to see here is if I do this again and I go to the outside leverage, you're going to see the same thing is going to happen. And I'm just going to do the same thing with these routes just so you can see it that the Y is going to basically get inside, it gets off the player, and it cuts to the side. Now I can throw this ball away from all of the uh, KOs and be able to make my catch. Now you're probably saying that's great, but the user's gonna cover him. And that's 100% correct, right? You can't just only get one route open and cover two man, unless it's something like the wheel route where the user's not gonna be anywhere near him, right? So what we gotta do is gotta get another route. Running back, Texas routes are one of the best routes you can do in order to make sure that you have the ability to also go ahead and um, give yourself a, a second round. Now I can also put the, the uh, A on a, on a post, give ourselves anything that kind of crosses the field, right? So if they're doing something like this and they're, and they're playing that outside leverage, and then you're gonna have that second option as that RB goes across the field, the user's gonna have to pick one direction or the other, and you're gonna be able to have a two-way option depending on who they pick and have easy plays. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go show you another route that works very similarly, that's gonna get the user's attention as well. We're gonna stay in the gun spread. It's the 60 streak X option. And this is the same route I talked about in our video last week on beating you know, um, plays in the red zone. You can see here that this Y route, it doesn't matter if they're inside or outside leverage, I'm gonna go ahead and call this more often on outside leverage because if they're inside leverage, I'm gonna go with that wheel route almost every single time. But if they're in outside leverage, what we're gonna do is watch this Y, He's gonna be able to get off that route the same way, but more importantly, he gets across the field in a way, again, that it's going to be um, basically horizontally, so that way you don't have to worry about, you know, that guy undercutting it. And that, that's a huge thing here. So if this guy gets off that route, this time he didn't really do a great job off the initial, but it gets a speed burst once he gets off that one little like touch, you can see how that worked. Now, in order to get routes, we can definitely put a uh, Texas by the uh, running back, but if they're playing outside leverage, you almost get the same thing out of a slant. So if I do something like this, where I just put two streaks on the field and then two slants, and then you know whatever you want to do with the running back, but a lot of times if you look at the A, he's going to probably get off that ball the same way. Now you're going to see how you're going to be able to get yourself some easy yards, right? Now, do I say do two slants? You can, but a lot of times the two slants are going to run into each other because of the elevation. But this goes and breaks at different, you know, um, different times. 
which gives you that opportunity to kind of miss each other. So that's definitely another way that I like to do an inside shape. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is creating a stack, okay? So if I go to corner strike out of this same formation, uh, what you're gonna see is that we're gonna be able to kind of get two ways here, right? They go ahead and do that press, right? And I go ahead and move this X over. I'll put the A on a, um, a crosser just because I wanna kind of get that left safety not to go over there. But what you're gonna see is the X is gonna get free release. And then when he goes ahead and gets the outside, we're still gonna be able to kind of catch that ball over there. A little bit more of a risky throw just, just because we only have two players over there, but you can see that works. Now, in that same realm, right, what you're going to see is you also have the ability to go ahead and um, hit this B. This B route does a good job of not getting pressed at all here, but it's a little bit more risky on the reaction after the cut. And you can see here that we made that there, but there are times if you don't time it right or you don't pass lead it to the outside, that could be a little bit more risky for you. But just know that you've got the ability that if you go ahead and, and do this motion here, do the same thing on both sides, right? What you're gonna see is that you're gonna have that ability to hit that one way or that way, and then hit this guy over here. You're gonna have some really nice routes when it comes to the C routes, whether you stack them or you get the right angle to where you're gonna see this play does both against cover two man. Now, lastly, what I want to do is go ahead and show you a bomb, okay? And this is going to be something out of the Trips Halfback Week. And we're going to call the play, um, let's go ahead and look at it here. It's called PA Read. But I'm going to flip it. Um, I'm going to do it from the right hash mark. The reason I want to flip it is I got a right-handed quarterback. If you ever want to do bomb plays, it's best to go and do it to, um, if you have to roll out, roll out to your strength and do it this way. All I'm going to do is put the A on a corner, right? I do that. What you're going to see here is that oftentimes, what you're gonna have is your player is going to get basically crashed into him, right? Now I could do this this way, I can put him with outside leverage, does not matter. And what you'll see, the X is gonna be an inside release. So he'll get off that guy a lot. If we have enough time because it's only three person, we can out throw everybody to the right hand side and get ourselves a big score. You can see that they just kind of get entangled over there. Um, I'll show you the instant replay real quick so you can see it. That was obviously one of the better ways that it'll happen because these guys actually got really, really you know, entangled here and we were able to do it. But if I do it again, you'll see that it is something that is consistent. That is probably one of the more wide open that it'll be. But if I go ahead and do this again, you'll see here that if I just wait on it, the X is gonna get over the top. Now we're gonna basically wait until he gets you know, over there catch this ball and you get yourself a one place score. So these are definitely different ways that I'd like to go ahead and show you how to beat cover two man out of the run and shoot playbook. Um, it's gonna be something that you're gonna want um, if you're a passer because it is gonna be something you're gonna see a lot, um, especially with the abilities they put in. Now I'm gonna do one more um, type of setup, but it's not gonna be on this video, guys. If you guys know about our player of the day, it's something that we do every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for only YouTube subscribers, completely free. Just hit that subscribe button and you can go ahead and unlock another um, type Type of uh, concept that I like to do that absolutely gets a man switch in cover to man and can get somebody open pretty easily and allow you to attack them that way as well. So go ahead and check the play of the day. You're only going to be able to see it on our um, homepage of our YouTube. If you're a subscriber, it'll pop up there for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Appreciate y'all.